This is the first section in chapter 8 in the Pure 2 book, which is on parametric equations. Now, all of the equations that you've done so far have been what we call Cartesian equations. And a Cartesian equation is an equation that links x and y. So here's an example of our Cartesian equation um, or even this. Yeah, these are Cartesian equations. So Cartesian equation, it links uh, x with y. It's basically what it does. So you could say that y is a function of x or you could even say that x is some sort of function of y. Now, parametric equation, parametric equation is different. With a parametric equation, uh, x and y are linked by a third, what we call parameter. And that parameter is t. Often t might stand for time. Here's an example. Um, x equals 2t, y equals 1 over t. And if I wanted to generate x and y coordinates, maybe to plot this, what I would do, I will substitute in different values of t to get my x and y coordinates. So, for example, if t was uh, 1, then let's just finish this table off. If t is 1, then x would be 2, because it's 2t, and y would be 1 over 1, which is 1. If t were 2, then x would be 4. And y would be 1 over 2. If t were 3, be 6, and then 1 over 3, and so on. Now that's a very simple one, but parametric equations, um, they allow you to generate more complex looking uh, graphs and equations, ones that you couldn't get if they were a Cartesian equation. So uh, we can generate uh, much more complex functions with uh, parametric equations. So they have applications in mechanics, because you know if t is time x and y might represent the position the x uh, two-dimensional uh, position of an object so that's the, the main difference now t doesn't have to be positive I've chosen some positive value t doesn't even need to be a whole number t can take any real value yeah there may be cases where actually um, it specifies t needs to be between a particular range, but it can take any real value unless it's specified otherwise. Any question where you it tells you to find a Cartesian equation and you start with a parametric equation, to change a parametric equation, parametric to a Cartesian equation, you need to eliminate t. So get rid of t and you, the way that you do that is you're going to make t the subject of one and substitute into the other now since we've got x equals 2t and y equals t squared it probably makes more sense to make t the subject of the x equation rather than the the y one because if you use the y one you've got to do the square root and you've got to remember the positive and negative square root it's a bit fiddly so we're going to take the x1 and make t the subject. So that will give us t equals x over 2. 
that will substitute into the y equation. So y equals x over 2 squared, all squared, rather than t squared. And from that, we can say y equals uh, x squared over 4, or a quarter x squared. Okay, so we found the Cartesian equation. Now, you could, if you wanted to, leave your answer in this form, but it's probably more useful in that form uh, when we get on to the later parts of the question. So part B, state the domain and range of the function. Now the domain is the uh, minimum and maximum uh, that the x value can take. Now, if t is going between negative 3 and 3, then I can see that my x value, if my x value is x equals 2t, well, that means that the minimum x value that I can get is going to be 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, and the maximum x value I'm going to get is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. So that gives me a domain of x values which go from negative 6 to 6. So that's my domain. The range is the minimum to maximum values of y. Again, t is going from negative 3 to 3. So my values of y are given by y equals t squared. So the minimum, minimum value of y is going to be what I get by doing 0 squared, which is going to be 0. And the maximum value of y is going to be when I do either negative 3 squared or 3 squared and that will give me 9. Now notice on this one the range you don't get the range by putting in negative 3 and, posit and positive 3 into the y function that will just give you 9. This is a quadratic that goes up to 9 but goes right down to 0 so remember that generally when you're finding the range and domain of a function. So the range um, is range of, so we have a range of uh, y going from 0 to 9. I'm sure I've got the right signs. Part C, sketch the curve with the given domain. Now this should be fairly straightforward now that we've worked out the range in the domain. And we know that our function, the Cartesian equation we've got here, is a quadratic. Now, we know that it goes down to 0 and it goes up to 9 between uh, 6 and negative 6. So we can put all of those numbers on the axis. So negative 6 to 6, got a 0 down here and it's going up to 9. We know that this quadratic is symmetrical about the axis because it's just like a quarter x squared. So that will give us a function that looks something like that. Probably need to move that across because that's meant to be on the end there. So there we go. That will be my range. That Sorry, that will be my, my sketch of the curve. So anytime you've got a sketch, you need to write down the important parts, where it's crossing the axis, what's its maximum, where it's minimum, that type of thing. Right, so here we have um, our x function there, our y function here, that's our Cartesian equation, and it's saying the parameter t um, has to be greater than negative 2, and there's two things we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is to find our Cartesian equation of this cur curve, and this is the form it needs to be in, y equals something. And also we need to state here um, the domain, you know, what the values of x can take. So the first thing we need to do is decide 
what we're going to make the subject. Are we going to make x the subject? Oh, sorry, we're going to make t the subject here or t the subject here. Well, since we want to preserve this, y equals something, it makes sense to rearrange this in terms of t and put it in here. Then we've got y equals something in terms of uh, t uh, in terms of x. If we made t the subject here and put it in here, then you'd have x equal something and you've probably got to rearrange it to make y the subject in this form and that just creates more work. So we're going to take the x function and we're going to make t the subject. So the first thing we're going to do is do, to do e to both sides. Uh, from there, um, the e and log will cancel out. And last step, we'll have t equals e to the x minus 3. Now that can get substituted into the second function. So y equals 1 over e to the x minus 3. That's what t is, plus 5. And that will simplify to y equals 1 over e to the x plus 2. So there we go. There's our Cartesian equation in the form that they require. Now we also need to state what the domain is. What's the values of x? Well, let's go back to this over here. This will help us work out the range. It says that t needs to be greater than negative 2. Now, if t actually equaled negative 2, you would get 1 in the brackets. Now, since it's going to be greater than negative 2, what you're going to get in the brackets here is going to be greater than 1. So we're actually going to be working out, let's do it over here, the log of um, something greater than 1. Now, I know that the log of 1 is 0. So the log of something greater than 1 is going to be greater than 0. Now, if you're not sure, you can always check. Work out the log of something a little bit bigger than 1 and see what happens. Is that bigger than 0 or smaller than 0? You can always try some numbers and see what you get. So the range is x is greater than 0 because what we put in the brackets is going to be greater than 1 because we've got um, 3 added to a number greater than negative 2. Right, OK, part B. No graphs here. We may use a graph to help us. Sometimes a, a graph is useful. And we're going to write down what the range of f of x is. It's going to be our y function that's going to help us work out the range. So y equals 1 over t plus 5. Now we know that this value of t here is going to be greater than negative 2. So let's imagine that actually t was negative 2. What would the value of y be? So if we had 1 over negative 2 plus 5, I know it's greater than negative 2, but if it was negative 2, then uh, what I would get would be a third. Now, what we need to decide is, is it going to be greater than a third or less than a third? Now, this needs a, a, just a little bit of thought. So as this increases, as it gets bigger than negative 2, what's going to happen is this denominator is going to be bigger. I'm, I'm going to end up with 1 over a number actually greater than 3. Now you know that as the denominator gets bigger, the actual value of the function, the value of y, is going to get smaller because it's a reciprocal. Yeah. So as the denominator increases y will decrease or it'll get smaller it won't become negative but it'll get smaller so what does that mean about our actual uh, range so y is going to be less than a third because it's going to get smaller okay it's going to be less than a third 
at the same time, it's also going to be greater than zero. It can't be negative. So less than a third implies actually that um, it could be a negative number, but it can't be negative because we're putting a number bigger than this at the bottom. The number's getting smaller and smaller. It's getting closer and closer to zero, uh, to zero, like a uh, a reciprocal tends to do. So uh, and y needs to be uh, greater than zero. It can never be zero. So we can put that together, and we can get that our range is going to be greater than zero and less than a third. Or you could write your rate your range like this: that uh, f of x is less than a third and greater than zero. So that would be our answer for part B. Now you can do exercise 8A on pages 200 to 202.